media are, are usually very confusing when journalists decide to talk about the infallibility of the church. They don't usually know exactly what that means and have a very narrow approach to it. They only think of the infallibility in terms of the solemn and uh, proclamations that the Pope or the ecumenical councils uh, rarely do in, in the history of the Church. When they talk, they teach ex cathedra, as, uh, uh, as we usually say. So these are actually more, more of a exceptions in the history of the Church and are the last step of the infallibility of the Church. It's important that we as Catholics understand where really the infallibility of the Church lies and exists. And so first of all, when we think of this topic, we need to think of uh, the mystical body of Christ in history, which is the people of God. People of God ourselves walking through history, they, we are supernatural. We are uh, the mystical body of Christ incarnated that keeps being in this world present until the end of time through us, with the assistance of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. So it's important to understand that we, as people of God, cannot get revelation wrong <laughs> in questions of faith and morals in history, because we are God incarnated and present in mystery in this world. This truth is expressed in the easiest, simple, uh, most simple way, simplest way, in, the, in point 92 of the Catechism that recites, the whole body of the faithful cannot err in matters of belief. This characteristic is, is shown in the supernatural appreciation of faith, sensus fide in Latin, on the part of the whole people, when from the bishops to the last of the faithful, they manifest a universal consent in matters of faith and morals. So this is the first level in sense of the infallibility of the Church, the sensus fide, the appreciation of the faith, as the Catechism says, by all people of God in history, including, you know, you know uh, lay people and ordained people and the bishops, all in, uh, in harmony together. So this, the second level would be the so-called ordinary and universal magisterium, which means the teaching of the Church through the bishops spread throughout the world and throughout history when it's consistent and constant and it's in harmony with the, with the Pope. This point is expressed very well by uh, the Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium 25, that says, although the individual bishops do not enjoy the prerogative of infallibility, they nevertheless proclaim Christ's doctrine infallibly, whenever, even though dispersed through the world, but still maintaining the bond of communion among themselves and with the successor of Peter, and authentically teaching matters of faith and morals, they are in agreement on one position as definitely to be held. Definitely to be held. So it's important to understand that these truths that are universally taught in history by the bishops in harmony with the Pope are already definitive. They cannot be changed. They are, and they express the infallibility of the Church in harmony with the sensus fide, with all the people of God in history. The harmony between the the universal magisterium of the Church, ordinary, not the extraordinary, extraordinary would be the one ex cathedra, right? But which is an exception. But uh, uh, the harmony between this magisterium and the sensus fide is clear in a point of the Code of Canon Law, point, uh, the Canon 750, hmm, which reads like this, those things are to be believed by divine and Catholic faith which are contained in the Word of God as it has been written or handed down by tradition, that is, in the single deposit of faith entrusted to the Church, and which are at the same time proposed as divinely revealed either by the solemn magisterium of the Church or by its ordinary and universal magisterium, which in fact is manifested by the common adherence of Christ's faithful under the guidance of the sacred magisterium. All are therefore bound to avoid any contrary doctrines. And there are other canons that, you know, talk about punishments, just, uh, just penalties for people who deny this truth. So again, when we think of the infallibility of the Church, we need to think first of all of the very nature of the Church being 
the people of God in history in embodying the sacramental presence of Jesus Christ with the assistance of the Holy Spirit, we as a whole cannot get the truth of faith and morals wrong in history. And then we have the universal ordinary magisterium of the Church, which is expressed by the harmonious teaching of all the bishops in history, not just one of them, but the whole of them in history. This is important. This magisterium cannot be in contradiction with the other, you know, moments in history and with the universal beliefs of the Church. And then we have, as, as an exception, the infallibility ex cathedra, which very rarely in history is sol solemnly defining one of these truths through either the Pope or the Ecumenical Council. In this case, we also say that these truths are not only definitive, but also uh, defined, because they have a formal definition in the Magisterium of the Church. Mm -hmm.